don't intend to have a, a lot of visual exhibits today. For purposes of clarifying this contention, what we're talking about, you will hear from me and possibly the others references to the Western Lake Erie Basin, and I would like to. Can you uh, I may. Get, speak closer to a microphone? Sorry. I can't pick you up if you. Um, I would like to approach the panel and and also ultimately counsel for the parties to show them what we mean when we're talking about the Western Lake Erie Basin. Okay. Just for point of clarification, we did ask that we be notified and the other parties be notified of any visual aids. I don't recall that, but... All this is is a map. All right. Does anybody have any objection to us looking at a map? I don't think that will. Okay. Okay. Right. Right. Let's That's go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Without that part. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is, of course, Lake Erie. Here's the Detroit area. Monroe is there, approximately. There's Toledo. These are the Lake Erie Islands, the western Lake Erie Basin. We're talking about the area west of the Lake Erie Island archipelago, if you will. Okay. okay. Let me show that to the uh, other, other representatives. Here's the islands, Detroit, Toledo, and the Basically, Could you give us a sense of the distance from the islands to um, the site of 33? Yes, yes, sir. It is approximately 35 miles. 35 miles? Yes. Um, straight line miles. The uh, Western Lake Erie Basin is unique among the in the Great Lakes Basin, but and certainly uh, unique within the uh, Lake Erie itself for a variety of human-induced circumstances as well as natural ones. The Western Basin, which is only our starting point for discussion here, contains about 32% of the lake's shoreline, 13% of the surface area of Lake Erie, but only 5% of the Lake Erie volume. The, the Great Lake is often referred to as, as three basins, three, three general basin areas, eastern, central, and western, the average depth in the eastern portion of the lake runs uh, up to 200 feet. The average depth in the central basin is about 60 to 62. The average depth in the western basin is only about 24. That has a, a lot of implications for any future climate change uh, predictions for this region, which uh, are that perhaps over the next 40 to 60 years there will be as much as a meter and a half drop in the uh, average depth. The uh, geological, U.S. Geological Survey estimates that 71% or 10.6 billion gallons of Lake Erie water is used per day for cooling. Of this, nearly 3 billion gallons of water a day are used by the existing five power plants in the western basin. Those five plants, for purposes of discussion, are the Bayshore plant in Oregon, Ohio, which is immediately east of Toledo, the Whiting plant, which is a few miles up the coast in uh, southern southeastern Michigan, the Monroe power plant, another coal burner, uh, as is Whiting and uh, Bayshore, which is, of course, in Monroe, the Fermi plant, and at the far southeastern um, corner, if you will, of the western lake basin, Davis Bessie, which is a nuclear power station. These plants you combine. How much of that is uh, consumptive use? Uh, as opposed to cooling use? It's almost all thermal. No. Consumptive use. How much is passed through and returned? And how much is actually About discounted? 3 billion. About 3 billion per day? Not consumptive thermal use. It's for cooling purposes. Okay. He was asking. You say consumptive. Very little is used for consumption. Thank you. Um, the problems are that the, the, there's an enormous thermal impact, which is, in our estimation, going to become a more intense problem as time passes. And the addition of the Fermi power plant, uh, Fermi 3, alongside Fermi 2, will intensify the thermal effects even more greatly as the average lake level drops. Doesn't Fermi, Fermi 3 is proposed to have cooling power and be almost certainly required by law to have a cooling power, so wouldn't that tend to 
certainly uh, reduce rather significantly the level of any thermal impact? Well, it will not reduce the humidity and the evaporation effects uh, and, and the, the localized kinds of climate problems mm -hmm. that cooling towers bring along. Our question one on this contention asked, um, and this may go a little bit beyond what, where you were in the presentation, but we have limited time. So we asked whether a baseline assessment of environmental condition, conditions in the region near proposed Fermi 3 satisfies the impact requirement of NEPA and the NRC's NEPA regulations. Um, we talked about, so I don't know if you had a chance to look at the opinion in the Calvin Cliffs decision, but we did have some discussion. Of, of, do you disagree as a general matter with that type yes. of approach? That is, is it sufficient for them to establish an environmental baseline and then examine them being the applicant in okay. their environmental report to, to set forth an environmental baseline and then say, then describe how their project will or will not affect that baseline? It's, it's useful starting information, but as the uh, CEQ regulations, as well as the CLEPI decision echo, it, we're, we're talking about cumulative effects analysis, including past, present, and prospective um, impacts. And among the uh, possible federal decisions that we believe are pending or going to be pending soon include up rates for a, uh, about four power plant, nuclear power plants that we're aware of. Um, there's a possible upgrade somewhere in the offing next several years for Fermi 2 um, on September 8th of 08, the Point Beach uh, plant for uh, Unit 1 proposed a, or announced intentions to seek an upgrade in power for spring 2010 for Unit 1, Unit 2, spring 2011. Fitzpatrick plant proposes uh, or is, is anticipating seeking upgrade permission of 20% in fall of 2012. On March, pardon me, Palisades um, also submitted a, uh, a, an advance notice basically of further a stretch type of uh, upgrade in power. Those types of actions alone will increase the potential thermal and possibly uh, chemical and uh, radiological effects within the Great Lakes Bas Basin. And let me stress here, uh, with our very limited time, we believe that the CLEPI decision, which actually evaluated a multi-state environmental problem and decided it wasn't regionally uh, connected enough, that we're talking a multi-state uh, Great Lakes Basin, a good many of the plants that I have just mentioned are, if you will, upstream of the proposed Fermi 3 and the, uh, the actual waterborne effects, uh, if not the airborne effects, which are also from an upwind type of uh, position, are going to be, we believe, something that must be addressed within a NEPA document. Furthermore, there are at least, by our knowledge, 11 um, different nuclear power plant proposals and we're talking about in the regulatory and planning stages and announced on the Canadian side, which have been addressed not at all. Four of those are at the Bruce Peninsula, which is approximately 200 miles um, almost due north of where we sit. Three for the Nanticoke area, which is about 180 miles in a straight, well, not due east, but uh, somewhat slightly northeast on the uh, Lake Erie shore of Ontario. Pickering plant, which I believe is is on, did I say Ontario, Lake Erie? Pickering plant, uh, which is on Lake Ontario, there's a proposal for four new units there. We believe, number one, it's a mistake to believe, to, to conclude that the wind always blows from one direction. 